Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Last week, Colin, we started a very interesting series based on 1 John, and uh, the subject is the relationship between faith and love, and this week introducing the subject of obedience as well. Yes, because um, obedience is the outworking of love. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments, and it's also the outworking of faith. Paul says that he, his commission really is to lead people into the obedience that comes from faith. And I've explained last week that the twin themes of faith and love intertwine all the way through um, the first letter of John. And we're going to see that today as we begin to look at chapter 3. And there in um, verse 13, John writes... Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. Now, we've seen already, as we've been looking uh, at John last week, that Uh, the apostle doesn't mince his words. It's uh, the typical work of an elderly man who hasn't got any time for any truck. He, He goes straight to the heart of things. And he's really saying that the people who think they've got a wonderful relationship uh, with God, uh, that they love him and they love to pray and all the rest, but their relationships are a disaster, are really deceiving themselves because the kind of relationship that you have with God becomes reflected in the relationship that you have with other people. So we've seen already that he makes clear that if you love God, then you will love your brothers also. But now he's going a step beyond that in his argument, and he says, We know that we have passed from death to life. Now, that means we know that we are really born again, that we are a new creation, that we're no longer living in the death of sin, but now we have received the gift of life, eternal life, the life of God's Spirit, because we love our brothers. In other words, how can you tell whether a person really is born again or not by the way in which they love others? And he then says, anyone who does not love remains in death um, because in the worldly way of living, basically everybody lives for themselves and for um, their own ends and to fulfill their own dreams, visions, ideas. And if we are living for God, if we are obeying him, then we are living to please him and to fulfill the plan and purpose that he has for our lives. So there's a completely different starting point, really, in the way in which we regard ourselves and whatever purpose we're living for. And to live for yourself in Scripture is death. To live for others is life, which is why Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow after me. Because he who seeks to save his own life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake will find it. This seems to be talking about salvation and eternal life. I mean, it's the very basic basis of our faith, therefore. Yes, and we saw at the end of last week that uh, he was saying that the, the person who is born again will not continue to sin. I mean, there will... That doesn't mean he will never sin, but he won't get bound up in sin. He, he will readily come under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and will come to a fresh repentance and turn away from whatever sin has invaded his life. And then um, John goes yet another step further. He says in verse 16, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, 
Now, this is very important because nowhere in the whole Bible uh, is there any talk about God's unconditional love. Um, and what God did in one act on the cross was to show his love for all mankind by sending his son to die for all mankind. Now, that is the act of love. That is the price. That is the cost that Jesus Christ has already paid. In love, he laid down his life for us. It's not sentiment. It's love that is expressed in a very positive and definite action. Therefore, John concludes, we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. And of course, he's only reflecting the teaching of Jesus um, that if you love me, you will lay down your life from your friends. So what, what he's actually saying here is that just as Jesus laid down his life for us in love, so we will lay down our lives for others in love if we really do love the Lord and if we really are living in obedience to him. Now, that raises the question, well, what does it mean to lay down your life for others? So he gives a practical example. Now, this is just an example, but it does show how very practical this outworking of love has to be. It's not sentiment. It's not emotion. It's not I love you in the Lord, brother kind of stuff. This is very positive action. If anyone has material possessions and seen, sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Now, I believe this is a very, very um, fundamental verse of Scripture because, first of all, uh, John is saying, if you really do love your brother, you will express that love in positive action. You will want to reach out to him, to care for him, to give to him, to bless him, to encourage him, and so on, all very positive. But then he makes this statement, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Now, he does not say, let us not only love with words and tongue. He said, let us not love like that. Now, why does he say that? Because if you look at the Gospels, Jesus never acted like that. The only way, the only time really that he talked about the love was for his disciples uh, at the Last Supper. Uh, when he is addressing the world, he's not saying, I love you, God loves you, boom, boom, and all that kind of stuff. He did not evangelize the way that many people evangelize today or try to evangelize today. He was drawing people to a, a place of repentance and faith so that they could encounter the love of God for, him, for themselves. Because actually no unbeliever can understand the love of God until they actually meet with God. So uh, he is saying, John is saying here, let us not love with words and deeds. Because it's so easy to think that we're loving people if we just tell them that we love them. But he said, no, let us love with deeds and in truth. In other words, if your love is real, then your love is going to be expressed in positive action, not just in words. Well, words hardly seem necessary. Well, if the, I mean, you see, nobody would question that Jesus loved people, even though you know, I might have shocked one or two people by saying that he never told them that he loved them. In, in the whole of his ministry, there's no, there's no evidence of that. Um, the, the, uh, the one exception is possibly in uh, John chapter 11, where uh, John says that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. This is the chapter all about the raising of Lazarus from the dead. But it's not Jesus saying that, it's John saying it about Jesus. And of course, you see the love of Jesus in the way he healed people, in the way he restored them and forgave them and, and so on. So you see the love in action, but it is love in action, not in words. And I think this is the problem. Many Christians satisfy themselves with platitudes, really, saying that they love, whereas 
the love, agape love, is love in action. Do you think words actually can be more of a hindrance, can actually get in the way then if, if we only use words and don't use actions? We can do damage? Oh, well, I think we can because, I mean, people won't take us seriously. I mean, that just sounds hypocritical. You know, to say that you love someone but then you don't back it up with action, what have you actually said? You've said nothing. I mean, you've said something that's empty, you've said something that's hypocritical, you've said something that's false. Um, because agape love is not emotion. You see, somebody might say, oh, but I really do feel emotion for those people. Well, that's not love. You see, even the compassion that Jesus had for people always led to action. And compassion is an emotion. You feel compassion. But then Jesus always expressed his compassion in action. And so this is, this is what uh, God is calling us to do, to express that love, his love, for others in very positive action. And John says, this then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. So as we understand that the love that God has put in our hearts by the Holy Spirit has to be expressed in action, then we will see tomorrow how this is coupled with faith, which leads to obedient action. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 